Hi everyone. Um, I think it's time to start. So let's introduce myself. Um, my name is Alicia Frozzi, I'm from Reddit. And today I'm going to tell you what happened in the past years in QWERT. So first of all, this is not going to be an introduction about QWERT. Uh, if you had a chance to attend our virtual office hours, you get already an introduction. But if you are completely new to QWERT, you can think about QWERT as a Kubernetes extension, so designed to be Kubernetes native, in order to run virtual machines uh, using Libvirt and KVM inside containers. So in QWERT, we focus on many different areas. We had a new virtualization feature. We focus on um, improvement of security but also we try to be part of the Kubernetes ecosystem. So we integrate with various projects in order to offer a more robust and scalable platform. So QWERT recently has been graduated as a CNCF incubating project, and this shows how you can effectively run virtual machine using Kubernetes. So one of the strongest use case for QWERT is running GPU's workload. And uh, usually this cannot be effectively run with the regular containers. One example is the slicing of a, CP of a physical GPUs. So with QWERT you can create uh, and slice uh, partitioning uh, GPUs uh, using mediated devices. And then you can assign those virtual devices to different VMs, for example. So initially, the creation of these devices needed to be done manually in QWERT. And recently, we added the automation. And the uh, QWERT will automatically create the mediated devices based on the configuration. So this has been one of the recent improvements that we did in this area. Um, Usually to run a uh, virtual machine effectively, we need to pass very low level information to the pod where the VM is running. An example is CPU topology. Um, and uh, in this direction, we had recently uh, the NUMA affinity for the assigned device to the virtual machines. This, for example, is particularly useful if the VM is using SRIV devices or, again, GPUs. So one of the goals of QWERT is to abstract the workload definition from the different options in order to tune your VMs. One example is the real-time workload. So as a user, you just simply need to specify that you want to run a real-time workload, that will be just an option on the declaration of your VMs, and then QWERT basically automatically picks the best revert option, but it also schedules the VM on a node with the kernel with real-time support. So we focus on different areas, storage is one of those, and in storage area we have, we did a, a lot of uh, improvement, but we also integrated with um, other projects in storage ecosystem. And we are going to see many examples along the way. So usually when we talk about storage, uh, we have two levels. So we have the level, the storage that we pass to the pod, and then we have the storage seen inside the guest. So this can be particularly problematic if uh, there are, for example, file system changes. Um, one example is the case of snapshot. So we rely on CSI in order to take snapshot. However, if during the snapshot the VM still continue to write on the file system, your snapshot can be ended up to be not consistent. So recently we added the coordination between uh, the CSI snapshot and the QMU guest agent. So the QMU guest agent is basically a process that runs inside the guest. So basically, while we take the snapshot, then the QMU guest agent will FS freeze the file system. And so basically, this we can guarantee that the snapshot is consistent. Um, 
always in this, uh, this same kind of problem occurs when you try to expand the PVC. Um, so certain storage classes support uh, PVC expansion. However, initially this uh, expansion was not visible inside the guest. So recently we added the support for online resize. So basically we notify the VM that the file system has changed. So you can see also the expansion inside the guest. So backups is one of the uh, strong and needed feature uh, for virtual machine. Unfortunately, CSI doesn't offer this feature yet. So one of the most popular tools to take backups is Velero. And in Qvert organization, you can find a plugin that helps you to integrate Velero with uh, Qvert VM, and you can use Velero in order to back up the disk of your VM. Um, one of the traditional set tool in virtualization in order to manipulate, customize your VM disk are GuestFS tool. So recently we had a new command to virctl. Virctl is the Qver client um, with a new command that helps you to setting up um, a GuestFS pod with the PVC uh, attached. So basically you are able to use GuestFS tool in a containerized environment, and for example, rescue a faulty partition. So another area is, of course, network. Mm. Live migration is one of the top features implemented by Qvert, as Kubernetes doesn't foresee um, pod live migration yet. So this is implemented by Qvert and relies on Libvert. Unfortunately, not all the virtual machines are migratable. And one of the uh, causes can be that certain devices cannot be automatically detached from the node where the VM is running and automatically attached to the node where we want to migrate. So that was the case for SRIV devices. And recently, we overcome this limitation by basically unplugging the virtual function device, perform the migration, and then create an equivalent virtual function device on the target node where we want to migrate. Um, we have another example of integration in the Kubernetes ecosystem. Istio is one of the very popular uh, tools for service mesh. So today, KubeRVM can participate in service meshes. So for example, you can inspect uh, um, the virtual machine network traffic using the Kali dashboard, for example. One recent feature we added is the support for single stack IPv6. This is particularly needed if your cluster support only IPv6. So security has been one of the key areas where we focus our effort in the past year. So initially, uh, in order to run virtual machine in a pod, we needed to specify additional, additional capabilities. Uh, so we try to improve and remove this requirement. So today you can run um, virtual machine in a pod with the standard security profile. So we don't need this extra capability anymore. Um, always in security field, we had an initial support for TPMs and virtual TPMs. This is particularly needed if you want to run Windows virtual machines. Uh, one of the emerging uh, area uh, in virtualization is confidential computing. So we have added an initial support for IMD Secure Encrypted Virtualization, or SCV. So basically today you can run Qver VM with encrypted memory. However, the VM is not attested. Uh, this is something we are still researching. There are open PRs. And this is something coming in the near future. So we want to integrate with many projects and be part of as to the Kubernetes ecosystem. 
So in QWERC organization, you can find also a collection of Prometheus alerting and Grafana dashboard in the monitoring repository. And this can help you to understand the QWERT alerting issues. So Kubernetes is everything with scale. So we want to be able to create easily a group of VM and also uh, be able to manage this. And this is exactly the goal of VM pool. So basically VM pool allows you to uh, define, manage group of VM based on template. Uh, one very popular tool in Kubernetes ecosystem is Tecton for CICD. And uh, in QWERT organization, you can find a collection of Tecton tasks that allow you to perform operation on QWERT VMs, like, for example, creating custom uh, VM disk customization, executing command inside um, the, the guest, or maybe waiting for a certain state, and there are many more. So, as already said, we want to be part of the ecosystem, and we focus on many different areas, either from supporting different platforms, from integrating with popular tools in the Kubernetes ecosystem, but also with other projects that have been born with Kubernetes, like some Kubernetes SIG project, and here I have a couple of examples. So this year we added an initial support for ARM64, so this support with uh, multi-arch images. Uh, in Kubernetes SIG project, there is something called cluster API. So basically, this allows um, various cluster providers to create Kubernetes cluster on top of Kubernetes cluster. And this is actually a perfect use case for QWERT. Uh, so in Kubernetes SIG project, you can also find a QWER cluster provider, and we are going to see that in a demo at the end of the presentation. Um, again, uh, we want to integrate with many projects as possible, and uh, we also added the help check of QWER status um, in Argo CD, so another very popular CI CD tool. So what's next? Um, so confidential computing probably will be an um, area where we will focus in the next year, and we want to be, and we want to be able to um, deploy full confidential and untested virtual machines. Um, as already mentioned, we want to distinguish and separate the VM option from uh, the workload definition and abstraction, and this is exactly the uh, goal of Flavor APIs. So basically, you can define the kind of workload that you want to run, and then basically, Kuber will pick the best option in order to suit and match your use case. Um, already mentioned the Kuber cluster API. We also plan to add more feature, uh, like, for example, a better drain mechanism, if, for example, the underlying node has been drained. Um, one of the expected traditional features for a virtualization platform is the hot plug of various kind of resource. And this is actually one of the main challenges that we are facing uh, with the Kubernetes because of the pod immutability. So usually if you want to change uh, some resources assigned to a pod, this usually means that you need to restart the pod. And this is particularly problematic for a virtual machines. So we already had um, the implementation of volume hot plug but we also plan to do uh, for ed other kind of resources, like, for example, adding and removing network interfaces from a, virtual a running virtual machines. So that was a quick overview of what happened in the past years. Um, we, you can reach us in many ways. We are on Slack, we have a mailing list, and we meet weekly on Zoom. So you can feel free to join us. So I would like to show you um, a demo, and then uh, there will be some Q&A. Uh, so here I'm going to show you um, 
the Qver cluster provider. So basically, I'm going to create a cluster on top of another Kubernetes cluster using Qvert. And you can see also Qvert in action. So you can, you can have a feeling how that looks like. So here I have a Kubernetes cluster with two worker, with two nodes, one master and one worker. I have already uh, deployed Qvert there. You can check the status of Qvert using the CRD. And we can also check the various Qvert infrastructure pod. So everything is up and running. So now I want to uh, create a cluster, and this is the uh, definition. So I will just go through very quickly. This is based on a template that is available in the Qvert cluster API repository. So basically, I can define a cluster. Um, I have something called Qvert machine template that defines the template for my VMs. Uh, there are some configuration, a few cube add-on. And then we are interested also in the machine deployment. So this basically is uh, a CRD that controls the number of the worker I have in the cluster. So I can try to apply this YAML and various resources have been created. So first of all, we can check which uh, Qver uh, machine has been created. So I have a cluster with uh, one control plane and three workers, and we can check the VM. So there is one VM starting up, and as already mentioned, we deployed virtual machine inside pod. So this starting pod is the pod where my VM will be started. So it's taken a while to start the pod, so we can check the reason. So basically, this is pulling a container image. So with Qver, we are using container image in order to deliver VM disk. So this is a very handy way how we can ship VM disk with containers. So it's going to take a while in order to pull this image, but once it's present on a node, uh, the creation of other VMs from this kind will be very fast because we are basically creating snapshot of this, of this um, disk. So yeah, it will take a while to pull, then the VM need to boot. So yeah, we can simply watch the pod. The container disk is quite, is quite large, so I have a first uh, pod up and running, and after a while, I will end it up with four pod. So let's check it again. Yeah. I have four pod because I have four nodes. Okay, I can check also the VM status and it's everything up and running. Okay, so as already mentioned, uh, all the VM are uh, created from templates. So we can check the template, and I have two kind of templates. I have one for the control plane, and I have one for the worker. So we can inspect, for example, the control plane. It's a very simple VM. And we can also inspect that one for the uh, node. That looks pretty similar for this example, but you can customize and define and assign different resources. OK. So together with the Qvert machine template, we also, uh, OK, sorry. Um, first of all, now we just check what uh, the VM set up and running. But now I would like just to access the deployed cluster. So with the cluster creation, we have been also different secrets has been created. And we are focused uh, especially on two of them. So um, we are going to try to get the SSH key. So the SSH secret basically contains a private key that has been injected in every VM. So I can extract this secret, save it in a file, and use uh, this key later in order to access the VM that has been created. So this is, again, a simple um, Kubernetes secret encoded in Base64. 
So here we can see the private key. So I will simply save this in a file, give the SSH permission um, in order to be able to use the key. Then I have to start, of course, the SSH agent. And then I will basically add, add the key. So together with the key, I, will, I, have also, I want also to save uh, the cube config. So here you can see also the cube config of the deployed cluster. So again, I'm going to save this and it will be useful uh, later. Okay, so I got all the, all the secret I needed and I want to access the, um, the control plane. So as already mentioned, uh, we have something called VRCTL, that's the Kuber client. And this has different commands that help you to interact with the virtual machine. So for example, VRCTL has an SSH command that helps you to access your virtual machine. So I can simply get again the name of my VM and I want to use the key that I save and got it from the secret and try to access the control plane. Okay, so now I'm inside the control plane. So for example, I can inspect which uh, containers are running on it. And I am trying to check what I have inside the, the, my home. I don't have any dot cube, so I'm basically missing the cube config. So that's the reason why I also save the cube config in a, in a file. So virctl has also another command called scp that allow me to copy file from my local host into uh, the remote one. So I can basically copy the cube config I saved previously on the control plane. Uh, so in this demo, I'm just going to access the control plane, but you can access any nodes. So we can check it, yeah, we copied successfully the kubeconfig, so now I can use this in order to access the deployed cluster. So for example, I can get the node, and I have a, a cluster with one control plane, three worker. We can check the pod that are also running on this, that are, this is our, the boring pod that we got with Kubernetes installation. Cool, so everything is up and running, now what I want to try to do is try to scale. So we can try uh, to get the machine deployment. This is something that controls the number of the worker I have in my cluster. This is something a little bit that works like the replica set. So we see that we have three replicas and now I'm going to try to edit this uh, CRD and try to modify the number of replica from three to four and see what happened. Okay, so this has been updated successfully and we could try to get the VM and I have a new one starting up. So if I get the pod, I have already a pod running. This is because I have pulled the container image and it's already present on the disk, so it's very fast uh, to, to create new, new virt launcher pod. Okay, and uh, I already have a four uh, worker. So what we can try now is to access again the control plane and see what happened in the cluster that uh, I have deployed. So if you look now, there is still no, not a fourth uh, worker. This is because it takes a while to boot the VMs, then uh, the node needs to access uh, the cluster. But if we um, try the command, after a while, we can see that we have a new, a new node there. There is 20 second age. So everything is up and running, so we have managed to scale very easily using the Kubernetes cluster API. Okay, so now I want to play a bit with the storage. So let's try to create a new volume, a new VVC. And I will uh, try to hot plug, so uh, to add uh, this storage at runtime. So let's create a new one. So um, virctl, again, 
has a new command called uh, add volume. So first of all, let's check before adding which kind of volume I have in the control plane. So I have simply two of them, VDA and VDB. So yeah, let's exit. So as I already mentioned, virctl has a, a command called add volume that allow two whole plug resources. So I can just simply use this. I have to specify the VM where I want to add the new storage. Need to specify the claim name. And then we will see what happens. Yeah, so. so the, the request has been successfully su submitted. But we can see that we have a new pod here. So this pod is actually um, the trick that we use in order to store the hot plug volume there. Because uh, the hot plug, uh, volume hot plug is not transparent to, to Kubernetes. So we want to protect the PVC uh, from being accidentally deleted, for example. And this is the reason for this HP pod. OK, so when this pod is up and running, it means that we have been successfully managed to add this volume. So we can try again to log into the control plane with SSH and check the disk again. So now you can see that we have a new disk as the header, so uh, we have been successfully managed to add the, the node. OK, so now let's try to increase the size of this volume. So I can basically modify the size of this PVC. Let's try from 10 to 20. Let's check if this has been already applied to the PVC. That's the case. So let's try to log it again and check the disk. So you can see that now SDA has a 20 gigabyte size. So this is everything I wanted to show you. Hopefully you saw Qbert in action. And uh, for example, with the Qbert cluster API, you can create maybe on your bare metal server additional cluster, maybe for uh, one for uh, development, one for testing, and one for production. OK, there are any questions? I don't know if you need a microphone. <laughs> Hi. Um, great presentation. Um, a question. Is Kubeford now fully uh, supported by OpenShift so that I can run OpenShift bare metal and run uh, virtual machines uh, on it? Yes. Um, so you can install, uh, uh, you can have OpenShift on your uh, cluster. You can install Kuber there. Um, but this is still a very uh, early stage, this uh, Kuber cluster API. So deploying OpenShift in OpenShift is something that is not supported yet. OK, thank you. Um. So basically, your nodes were uh, bare metal nodes, and they were can be can they be provisioned with uh, metal cube? Yeah, I mean, how you so where you install cube? So the um, bare metal, let's call it like in so this way. Basically, can I have a cluster API with metal cube as provisioner, and then over that bare metal, can I use Qvirt as Yeah, provision? if you have KVM, yes. Uh, or even you could use emulation, well, of course. Y you should, yeah, if you have a node with KVM and virtualization capable, yes. OK, thank you. Thank you for the presentation. Um, what, what are the steps for making a, a custom Qvirt VM image for, so like, Sorry, can you repeat the question? Um, I missed the first part. What, what are the steps for making a, a custom Qvirt VM image? Um, what do you mean with custom um, Qvirt? Yeah, like how, how do you build an image with uh, like a custom VM image 
with some stuff pre-installed on it, for example? Um, you mean Qvirt or, or an operative system? Uh, for for Qvirt. Um, so... Like, can I have a, a VM image with um, my application pre-installed on it? Yes. And to deploy this with Qvirt? Yes. yes. So, I mean, Qvirt is just... Uh, it's like uh, an extension and help you to deploy the virtual machine. What is running in your VM is uh, up to you. So you can prepare, of course, uh, a VM disk uh, with uh, already something pre-installed. And uh, so, for example, when I mention uh, Tecton Task, uh, that's exactly one very good use case for Tecton Task. Uh, um, you can use, for example, GuestFS tools uh, in order to uh, add, for example, additional packages uh, on the disk. Uh, or otherwise, we support also Cloud Init. Uh, this is something that you can specify in your VM uh, definition. And basically, when you boot the first time, it's going to install the packages to some configuration. So it really depends how you want to configure, but it's, of course, possible. Thanks. Sorry, I think you need a <laughs> microphone. So, in, in my imagination, we cannot use any image without preparing for kubevirt, like having kubeidm binaries on it or some prerequisite to be used as... No, use. you can have a simply a VM disk. Uh, you, so, um, it's... Uh, if you can also prepare it maybe even locally with virt manager, for example. Um, then you can copy that disk in a scratch container image and then could be used, for example, as a container disk. So the container disk is basically what I show in the demo when I was pulling. So actually that's uh, a good example. So for example, what I was pulling in during the demo, it was already a Fedora um, VM disk with already Kubernetes installed. So basically oh, when okay. I when I started, it was already up and running with all the packages uh, there. So it has, for example, Cryo and all the, the things needed for a basic Kubernetes installation. Okay, thank you. Sorry. <laughs> Can, oh, I think... Oh, okay. So when a worker knows a bare metal, it would be straightforward to provision the VMs, but when they're in the cloud or on other VMs, do you need nested virtualization? Yeah. Yes. Can you repeat the question? Um, can you repeat? Just, just, say, uh, just say nested VM support is required to run on VMs. Or yeah, I mean, uh, you need to support nested VMs if uh, you are not on bare metal. Um, or you can use emulation, but of course, uh, this is not a suggested way. So nested is, of course, the best option. Hi. In your cluster API demo, I noticed... Sorry, uh, where are you? Right here. Oh, hi. <laughs> hi. In, in your cluster API demo, I noticed that you, um, you copied the kubeconfig into the control plane node yep. and accessed uh, the kube API server from the control plane node. How would you have exposed kube API server outside of the control plane node. So um, how, how could you have run it from the same session that you were running mm -hmm. Vert Cuttle from? So it's of course running in a VM, so you need to expose the port. Um, there are uh, various ways how you can do this. Uh, so for example, virctl has also a command called expose. Um, yeah, um, you can forward the traffic, uh, so there are, uh, there are ways uh, you can do that in Qvert. It really depends also on your network solution that you are also deploying with Qvert. So it really depends on the use case, but it's, it's of course possible to expose uh, a port uh, from, from the VM and then be accessible from the ou outside from the deployed cluster. That was just a demo and it allowed me to just show a couple of things, but yeah, that's possible. What, what does that expose look like um, in Kubernetes terms? Are you creating a, a service or um, how are you, yeah. how are you expose, you're just creating a service? Yeah, uh, so for example, for the SSH, uh, we create a service in order to expose the SSH port uh, available inside the virtual machines. That's, uh, that's another example how we, we, 
we are using um, Kubernetes services in order to access various uh, networking inside the VM. The, but the SSH case was exactly the same. Thank you. So we still have three minutes. The, does anyone have other questions? I think so. No? Okay. Done. Thanks for your attention. Enjoy. Keep going. <laughs>